Now we come to chapter 6, module 5. In this module, we shall see how Fourier transform can be applied to solve linear ordinary differential equations. We shall consider here some examples. We consider first example, consider the linear ordinary differential equation, in short we call it as ODE, d square f dx square plus a df dx plus minus b f equal to g x, where the range of x is from minus infinity to plus infinity with the condition f x and f dash x both tends to 0 as x tends to plus minus infinity. Also here a and b are constants and g x is a given function which is known whose Fourier transform also exists. Now we shall apply Fourier transform to solve this linear ordinary differential equation. Let capital F s denotes the Fourier transform of small f x which is given by 1 by root 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity small f x e to the power i s x d x and capital G s is the Fourier transform of the given function small g x which is given by 1 by root over 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity g x e to the power i s x d x. Now, we will apply Fourier transform to the given differential equation. Before that, we calculate the integral minus infinity to plus infinity d 2 f d x 2 e to the power i s x d x and integrate this by parts. So, the first term is f dash x e to the power i s x, x ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity minus i s integral from minus infinity to plus infinity f dash x e to the power i s x d x. Now, from the given condition of the differential equation f x and f dash x both tends to 0 as x tends to plus minus infinity. So, here the first term vanishes and we obtain 0 minus i s integral from minus infinity to plus infinity f dash x e to the power i s x d x. Now, this integral we again integrate by parts, so that we obtain 0 for this term minus i s f x e to the power i s x minus infinity to plus infinity minus i s integral minus infinity to plus infinity f x e to the power i s x d x. Again from the condition of the differential equation we have seen that f x also tends to 0 as mod x tends to infinity. So, this gives the first term here as 0 and we finally get minus s square capital F s, where capital F s is the Fourier transform of small f x. So, the this integral is evaluated as minus s square capital F s. Next we evaluate uh, integral minus infinity to plus infinity d f d x e to the power i s x d x. Again we integrate this integral by parts and use the condition f tends to 0 as mod x tends to infinity to obtain this integral as minus i s into capital F s. So, 
with this result we multiply both sides of the given ordinary differential equation by e to the power i s x by root over 2 pi and integrate between minus infinity to plus infinity with respect to x. And using these results we find the ordinary differential equation reduces to minus s square plus i a s plus b into capital F s that is equal to capital G s. So, that capital F s is equal to minus capital G s divided by s square plus i a s plus b. Now, we if we take the inverse of capital F s from here whole thing if we take Fourier inverse, inverse then we find small f x which was the required function which is to be found out which is the solution of this differential equation. So, next task is to find the inverse Fourier transform of this expression. Now, to find the inverse we note that this function that means 1 by s square plus i a s plus b this can be rewritten as 1 by s plus i a by 2 whole square plus s square by 4 plus b. Now, we are to find Fourier inverse of this function. To find Fourier inverse of this function, we shall first find the Fourier inversion of the function 1 by s square plus c square where c is a constant which is positive. Now, Fourier inverse of 1 by s square plus c square according to formula of Fourier inverse, this is given by 1 by root 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus i s x divided by s square plus c square d s. Now, we are to evaluate the integral on the right hand side. To evaluate this integral we use the complex variable theory first we choose x as positive. Now, to evaluate this integral we consider the contour as given in this figure that is figure 1 that is from r to minus r capital R and uh, an arc of a circle which is denoted by gamma dash r. This is the contour here capital R is a very large positive number and gamma dash R as, uh, as we see that it is a half circle in the lower complex half plane with radius capital R and center as origin. So, this is the contour. Inside this contour we see that this function has got a pole at s equal to minus i c. So, using the residue theorem of complex variable theory, we can write this integral as over this contour as from my r to minus r on this line plus on gamma r that is on this arc of the circle which gives the left hand side and that is equal to twice pi i into residue at x equal to minus i c that means at this point at this pole. Now, on the arc gamma r dash the integral this integral 
this tends to 0 as capital R tends to infinity by Jordan's lemma of complex variable theory and the residue at x equal to minus i c can be calculated as limit x tending to minus i c x plus i c into e to the power minus i x s divided by s square plus c square and that comes out to be e to the power minus c x divided by minus 2 i c. Thus, making capital R tend to infinity here in this integral, we find that this part on this integral, this integral is 0 and we make capital R tend to infinity and we have calculated the resi residue to obtain for x positive integral minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus i x c divided by s square plus c square d s that is equal to minus 2 pi i e to the power minus c x divided by minus 2 i c which can be calculated as pi by c e to the power minus c x. Next we consider when x is negative. So, when x is negative this integral minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power i minus x s divided by s square plus c square can be evaluated by considering the figure 2 that is the contour given in figure 2. So, when x is negative minus x is positive. So, in the complex half uh, complex s plane we consider uh, this half circle that is contour consists of line from minus r to plus r and and an arc of half circle which is given by gamma r. So, inside this contour we see that the integrand e to the power minus i s x divided by s square plus c square has a simple pole at s equal to plus i c. So, by using complex variable theory the integral this integral can be written as integral from minus r to plus r plus integral over gamma r of e to the power minus i x s divided by s square plus c square d s which is given as 2 pi i into residue at x equal to i c. Now, using Jordan's lemma it can be seen that the integral over gamma r that is this integral tends to 0 as mod r tends to infinity and the residue at x equal to i c is limit s tends to i c s minus i c into e to the power minus i s x divided by s square plus c square and this is equal to e to the power c x divided by twice i s and which can be written as e to the power minus c into minus x divided by twice i c. Thus, making capital R tend to 0 we find for x negative the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus i s x divided by s square plus c square d s this is equal to pi by c e to the power minus c into minus x. Hence, for x positive and x negative this result can be combined to write integral from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power i s x divided by s square plus c square d s 
this is equal to pi by c e to the power minus c mod x. So, that Fourier inverse of the function 1 by a square plus c square will be given as if I multiply 1 by root 2 pi both sides then Fourier inverse of 1 by a square plus c square is equal to root over pi by 2 e to the power minus c mod x divided by c. Now, suppose capital L s is the Fourier transform of small l x, then we can write capital L s is equal to curl f of small l x. Now, from shifting property of Fourier transform we uh, which we have learnt earlier, we know that Fourier transform of the function e to the power i a x into l x that will give as capital L of s plus a. So, that Fourier inverse of capital L s plus a that is equal to small l x e to the power i a x. Now, we choose capital L s equal to 1 by c square plus s square. So, that small l x will be equal to root over pi by 2 e to the power minus c mod x divided by c. Hence, capital L s plus alpha is equal to 1 by s plus alpha whole square plus c square. So, that by shift property Fourier inverse of 1 by s plus alpha square plus c square that will be equal to e to the power i alpha x into root over pi by 2 e to the power minus c mod x by c. So, we use this to find Fourier inverse of 1 by a square plus i a s plus b that will be equal to Fourier inverse of 1 by s plus i a by 2 whole square plus a square by 4 plus b. Now, we choose alpha equal to i a by 2 and c square equal to a square plus 4 b by 4. So, Fourier inverse of 1 by a square plus i a s plus b is given by root over 2 pi e to the power minus half into a x plus root over a square plus 4 b mod x divided by root over a square plus 4 b and that we write as root over 2 pi into n x. So, that n x is the function e to the power minus half into a x plus root over a square plus 4 b into mod x divided by a square plus 4 b. So, the solution small f x of the ordinary differential equation which is given can be found out as minus Fourier inverse of g capital G s into 1 by a square plus i a s plus b. Now, capital G s as we know that it is the Fourier transform of small g x and 1 by a square plus i a s plus b is uh, Fourier inverse we have found out just now. So, Fourier inverse of the function on the right hand side that means this function this is the product of Fourier transforms of two functions. So, that we can it is Fourier inverse we can write it as the convolution of the function g u and root over 2 pi n x and that is given by minus 1 by root over 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity integral g u root over 2 pi n of x minus u du. This is by convolution theorem. 
and which is found to be equal to minus integral minus infinity to plus infinity g u n x minus u d u where n x is given above. So, this is how we have found out the solution of the given differential equation. <coughs> now, we consider the special case of the differential equation where a equal to 0, b equal to 1 and the function on the right hand side g x equal to minus 1 for minus 1 less than x less than plus 1 and 0 otherwise. So, that means the given differential equation reduces to uh, an ODE d 2 f d x 2 minus f that is equal to minus 1 when x lies in the interval minus 1 to plus 1 and 0 otherwise with the condition small f and f dash tends to 0 as mod x tends to infinity. So, we have found from the previous analysis that n x this will be equal to half e to the power minus mod x by considering a equal to 0 b equal to 1. Hence, the solution f x is given as half of minus 1 to plus 1 integral e to the power minus mod x minus u d u. Now, substituting x minus u as t this integral is written as half integral from x minus 1 to x plus 1 e to the power minus mod t dt. Now, for mod x less than 1 we shall evaluate this integral by breaking this integral from x minus 1 to 0 where t is negative. So, that the integrand here e to the power minus mod t becomes e to the power t dt and in the second integral that is from 0 to x plus 1 the t function is positive. So, that this integrand becomes e to the power minus t dt. So, that this integral can be evaluated as 1 minus 1 by e cos hyperbolic x for mod x less than 1. Also considering the same way uh, f x is equal to half of integral minus x minus 1 to x plus 1 e to the power minus t dt for x greater than 1 and this comes out to be e to the power minus x sin hyperbolic 1 and for x less than minus 1 the integral half x minus 1 to x plus 1 e to the power t dt which is equal to f x that comes out to be e to the power x sin hyperbolic 1 for x less than minus 1. So, we have found out for mod x less than 1 the solution f x is given by this function and for x mod x greater than 1 the solution of the given differential equation in the special case is given by f x here. So, in this example we have seen that how Fourier transform can be applied to solve an ordinary differential equation. Also in this example we have seen how complex variable theory can be applied to find the Fourier inversion of a function. Next we consider another example. Example 2 use Fourier transform to solve the differential equation d 2 f d x 2 minus f equal to e to the power minus mod x x ranges with between minus infinity to plus infinity with the condition f and f dash tends to 0 as mod x tends to infinity. We are to solve this differential equation using Fourier transform. So, taking 
Fourier transform on both sides of this differential equation that is multiplying both sides by 1 by root over 2 pi and integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity with respect to x and e to the power i s x. We find that this reduces to minus s square capital F s minus F s equal to root over 2 by pi 1 by s square plus 1 which can be simplified to be capital F s equal to minus root over 2 by pi 1 by s square plus 1 whole square. Here capital F s is the Fourier transform of small f x. Now we rewrite the expression for capital F s in certain fashion. Now from this expression for capital F s, if we can find out the inverse of this function on the right hand side, then we will get the solution small f x of the given differential equation. So, small f x will be given by 1 by root over pi by 2. Fourier inverse of root over 2 by pi 1 by s square plus 1 into root over 2 by pi 1 by s square plus 1. This expression is just an arrangement of the expression on the right hand side here. So, that f x can be written as minus root over pi by 2 into 1 by root over 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus module into e to the power minus mod x minus u du. Now, the inverse transform of this function gives this and this step is obtained by using the convolution theorem for Fourier transform. So, that we obtain f x as minus half integral minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus mod u minus mod x minus u du. Now, we break this integral into minus infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. So, that we obtain f x as minus half integral minus infinity to 0 in minus infinity to 0 integral u is negative. So, that e to the power minus mod u will be e to the power u. So, that we get minus half integral minus infinity to 0 e to the power u minus mod x minus u du plus integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus u minus mod x minus u du because in the range 0 to infinity for u e to the power minus mod u is e to the power minus u. Now, we have to consider this expression. So, this step can be further simplified as minus half integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus u minus mod x plus u du plus 0 to infinity integral e to the power minus u minus mod x minus u du. The first integral here is obtained by changing the first integral here into 0 to infinity. So, that we obtain this small f x as equal to minus half integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus u 
into e to the power minus mod x plus u plus e to the power minus mod x minus u du. Now let small l 1 x is equal to integral from 0 to infinity to the power minus u minus mod x plus u du and l 2 x is equal to 0 to infinity integral e to the power minus u minus mod x minus u du. That means the first term that is the first integral we call it as l 1 x and the second integral we call it as l 2 x. Now, for x positive this l 1 x can be written as integral from 0 to infinity e to the power minus u minus x plus u du and that can be evaluated as half into e to the power minus x. Now, for x positive the integral in L to x that means here the range of integration has to be divided into two integrals that means L to x is equal to 0 to x e to the power minus u minus x minus u du plus integral from x to infinity to the power minus u minus u minus x du. In the first integral here u is less than x and in the second integral u is greater than x. So, that this mod x minus u is written accordingly and considering this L 2 can be evaluated as half of e to the power minus x plus x e to the power minus x. So, that we write f x small f x that is the solution of the given differential equation as small f x equal to minus half x plus 1 into e to the power minus x for x positive. Now, for x negative we write x equal to minus x dash that means x dash is positive. So, in this case L 1 x will be equal to L 2 x dash. L 1 x is given by this integral if we substitute x equal to minus x dash then we obtain L 1 x equal to L 2 x dash and which can be evaluated as half of e to the power x minus x e to the power e x. And L 2 x by substituting x equal to x dash this becomes L 1 x dash and that is evaluated as half into e to the power x. So, in this case f x is given as minus half 1 minus x e to the power x for x negative. So, combining these two results we find for this is for x negative and this is for x positive. So, combining these two results we find the solution of the given differential equation f x is equal to minus half into 1 minus mod x into e to the power minus mod x. So, this is the solution of the given differential equation. So, in this module we have seen how Fourier transform can be applied to solve linear ordinary differential equation. With this we conclude this module.